Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here um, in front of this amazing community. Um, and today I wanna talk a little bit about internal context um, and open source hardware and the way I think about how we might uh, move forward democratizing the future of augmented cognition. Um, so we live in uh, a, an age of abundance. Uh, more data has been created in the last few years than in all of human history. Uh, that data can help us understand more about the world, the universe, one another. And in theory, it can help us learn faster, make better decisions, enjoy greater wellness. Um, but the brain's ability to process data isn't keeping pace. At best, it's slightly increasing while data is increasing exponentially. And so we're drinking from this fire hose of data. I call, it's a neurological condition I call TMI or too much information. And what we need to do is start to sip from that data um, and figure out the mechanisms by which we can start compressing that data into real in, information, usable information. Um, and in that process, internal context matters. I've been married for uh, many years. I have a two-year-old and a two-month-old daughter uh, at home. And I can tell you from experience that when you, the way you present information and the internal context it's received by matters. When your kid is hungry or tired and they're melting down is not the time to present them with a lot of options or give them lessons about fairness or even try to have a rational conversation. And uh, signals um, are, uh, are constantly running through your body. Um, there's electrical signals, chemical signals, mechanical signals, and they ref reflect the moment by moment reactions that we have to one another in the world around us. And I come from a background in neuroscience and engineering, um, and I've spent the last couple of decades sensing and making sense out of signals from the body, both from the perspective as a scientist and engineer, but also the perspective as an interactive artist. So it may not surprise you um, that I think the signals in the body not only reflect, but actually create our internal context. And so as we move forward, there are dozens of signals that can be measured from the body. And um, by measuring those and um, using machine learning algorithms, it's possible to start categorizing different emotional states. Um, you know, you can create about six to eight different emotional state categories with about an 80% reliability. And when we start identifying the difference between excitement and anxiety, sadness and anger, then we can start to deliver some of these real insights that we need in order to um, make decisions um, and uh, learn faster, be safer, um, live healthier, uh, live with less stress, um, and maybe even have more fun. But there are many challenges you know, those, that process is fraught with difficulty at, at many levels, um, ranging from data integrity to black box algorithms to trust and reality manipulation. And this is why I want to talk to you all today, because I believe open source and open source hardware is an important piece of that puzzle. There are a lot of conundrums that come up in a closed sourced um, ecosystem uh, where you're talking about augmented cognition. Um, where did the signals, how did, how did the signals get sensed from the body? Um, it's really important to know that both from a hardware and a firmware standpoint. Um, uh, how was the data filtered and preconditioned? Um, did that change the last time you got uh, a firmware update? How you can interpret that data really depends on that uh, understanding and having that open source perspective. Um, what about data ownership? Do I have access to my data? Uh, who else has access to my data? Um, it's often not entirely clear um, and often you don't have full access to your own data. Um, and, and, and that's really critical moving forward. And so that's why about two years ago, my lab started creating a mode of it. Um, and um, so a Motobit is, 
an open source um, biosensor that reads signals from the body. And I'm gonna try to give you a live demo. Um, so we'll see how that goes um, virtually. So here I have an emota bit and um, I'm gonna strap it onto my finger and then um, pull up our software over here and you can see the data live streaming off of my body. This happens to be on my finger for this demo, but you could have put one on your arm or you know, put it in this 3D printed case, um, which was created by our collaborators um, at University of Shikudamine. Um, and so when you look at this data, you can see data, uh, you can see um, uh, lots of signals streaming off of my body. Um, so here you see my heartbeat um, up here in the, in the top left. You can see my movements being represented on a nine axis IMU. And for those of you who've been following uh, my work for a number of years, uh, you'll recognize electrodermal activity or something uh, that used to be called galvanic skin response. Um, this is something that was measured by the old truth meter um, from uh, and uh, in in some make one of the make magazine uh, uh, articles, and you'll see as I if I like smack myself, there's a little bit of a delay, and then you can see my electrodermal activity bump up um, in response to that smack, and that's my um, arousal system saying, "Hey, what's going on there? Um, let's let's get out." Um, and so as you see me sitting here, you might see my data reflecting a level of excitement. Um, uh, we definitely would not see any level of nervousness or stress speaking to a large crowd online, because I definitely wouldn't be feeling that right now. Um, but it, it, the, uh, so you get some sense overall, and then um, this data is um, being collected through this ecosystem we're trying, this open source ecosystem we're trying to create based on Adafruit Feather. Um, so this is effectively an Adafruit Feather wing um, uh, that you plug into an Adafruit Feather and it immediately starts streaming data off uh, and can record the data directly onto the SD card on the wing. Um, you can see all the sensors that are here and you'll find that on our website. Um, if you want to go into more detail. Oops, oops, I just clicked on something. Sorry about that. Um, and so our goal is really to democratize affective computing or emotion sensing. Um, we want it to make it wearable, super easy to use anywhere on the body, uh, make it research grade and scientifically validated, um, and have the data be 100% user owned. We wanna make it affordable. Um, currently our target is $150, um, which is about one tenth of the cost of similar sensors on the market. And we wanna open it up to new kinds, uh, new opportunities in research, in art and DIY, personal health and education. And so to walk through some of the benefits for that, um, in research, for example, open source is critical. If you don't know how your data is being manipulated before you get it, or if you don't know when that data manipulation is being altered, um, then how can you create, uh, replicate, how can you replicate your studies? How can you create um, uh, new studies that find the same results as your old studies? Um, with data ownership, getting approvals for IRB is really uh, a, a challenge and being able to say, I know where the data is going. It's not going to company X or company Y or who knows where. Um, and making it low cost and wearable, I hope will open it up to new types of research and more research um, and more places in the world. And for makers and for education, I think it's critical going forward that we start working on this stuff at a younger, oh my gosh, sorry about that. Oh, don't, um, sorry about that. Um, 
the um, opening up to new types of uh, bringing it at, at younger ages. Um, so people, uh, students are learning about physiology and emotions, coding and machine learning, um, and doing it in a project-based way. So you can pick up and, and move forward. Here's an example of a maker who uh, used uh, an Adafruit feather wing to light up their heartbeat uh, as they wear the emotibit on their arm um, and learn about the scientific method. Um, consider the ethical implications. These are going to be huge going forward. I hope there's going to be more synergy between art and science. I hope it's gonna be easier to use. It's gonna be um, more flexible connectivity um, and complete versatility. So you can do whatever you want with your data. You can pipe it out to Max MSP or um, to uh, PD or whatever your, uh, whatever your favorite outlets are. And going forward, the future of augmented cognition is going to be critical. Um, and I think uh, open source hardware is going to play uh, a, a pivotal role in helping determine whether we're heading into a utopian future or more of a dystopian future. Imagine the difference between a world in which you are in charge of how internal context changes your information flow and transforms your reality so you can learn faster, have greater health and wellness, make better decisions, and a re well, and, and compare that to a reality in which some advertiser is sitting at the helm and controlling which information you're getting access to. So if, if this makes sense to you, if you agree that open source hardware will be critical to our future, um, I hope that you will join our community. Um, we're looking for uh, beta users. We have a limited number of beta partnerships that we would like to work with people um, to start using the hardware and our software ecosystem. Um, and we need to grow our community so that we can ensure a successful crowdfunding campaign later this year. Um, Thank you very much. Um, my name is Sean Montgomery, um, and I'll be on the Discord channel in the internal context um, subchannel. Uh, and uh, please reach out to me, ask me any questions, or reach out online um, uh, at emotabit.com, or you can reach us at Connected Future Labs. Thank you so much.